It's a very late, very hot summer in Australia and even here north of Sydney it's north of 40 degrees. But on a day like that you can still get out and about and enjoy yourself in a car that's made for touring. And this car is certainly made for touring. Interior space is sensational. The ride is absolutely brilliant. This particular Mazda 6 is the latest in the long string of Mazda 6s and 626s. This one has been out for about seven years. It came out in 2012, so it's almost at the end of its model life. In the meanwhile, it's had quite a few updates, not the least being to its pretty brilliant engine. The range comes in four trim levels. This is the second to top, the GT, and it comes in two body styles, a wagon and a sedan. This obviously is the sedan. There's two engines in the range. This particular one is the 2.5 litre petrol. It has 170 kilowatts and 420 newton meters. That's an awful lot of newton meters. The retail price is in the mid 40s. The GT, as the name suggests, is a Grand Tourer. Not hugely powerful, but an awful lot of torque. And that torque can cross continents in a single bound. This slinky design is called Kodo and it's Mazda's design language for these flowing lines and it's supposed to mean energy and God knows what. But what it means to you and me are these sleek headlights which are LED and active so they turn when you turn the wheel and this grille which has been festooned with vast amounts of chrome. I'll put a full list of inclusions in the written review and I'll put a link to that in the comments below. There's a word about Sky Active I want to have too and Sky Active is Mazda's term for a range of technologies that make this car more economical and quieter and drive better. There's Sky Drive, the transmission that acts a little bit like a CVT and a DCT and a it's an automatic transmission and that's all you need to know. Six speeds and it changes gears seamlessly. And in fact on our way here we took a highway, some really twisty roads with appalling road surfaces and even dirt and none of it upset Mazda 6. This was just brilliant, even in sports mode. The side profile is slinky and sexy and I particularly like the way that it darts up at the back. The boot has plenty of room and there's two catches just at the top just here to open the seat entry, it's a 60-40 split. The road so far has been incredibly rewarding as this road is to St Albans. The twists and turns really show up the Mazda 6 GT for the very capable car that it is. I've currently got this in sport mode there's a switch down here on the centre console. It gives the uh, acceleration a little bit more pep and the steering a little bit more weight and it makes the transmission a little bit more responsive and probably as good as some of the transmissions that have more speeds. The torque converter locks up which gives you the feeling of uh, a manual transmission. As we're going through some of these really twisty roads some of the driver aids are a little bit annoying. So for example, there's active lane guidance and that keeps you centered in the lane. And it does that by looking at where the markings are on the road. So marking in the middle and marking at the side and it puts you in the middle. This car also has blind spot monitoring and it's very clever blind spot monitoring. It tells you if cars are coming behind you and displays a little light in the side mirror, but also in the heads up display, which is right in front of my eyes and it looks like it's about at the end of the bonnet. And on that display, on that heads up display is the current speed limit. So there's speed sign recognition. This car is incredibly clever. Not only speed sign recognition, but it also recognises stop signs and displays that on the heads up display and also on the navigation and also the line markings for the road. So if I was to wander over this middle line now it would display a warning on the screen as well as vibrating the steering wheel and trying to put me back in the centre of the road. The website claims that 
Mazda 6 with this 2.5 will do well under 10 litres per 100 kilometres. But we've done currently 152.7 kilometres and it's showing 11.2 litres per 100 kilometres. However, having said that, now I'm in sports mode, the transmission isn't changing up as much as it did on the highway and it's trying to keep itself in a more sportier stance so it keeps the engine revs up so that you can call on that 420 newton meters of torque. Because it's a front wheel drive obviously there is a little bit of torque steer but nothing that you can't handle it's it's still quite pleasant to drive. One thing I will say about the way Mazda 6 drives is that it is so comfortable. I mean look at this interior it is absolutely beautiful. The trim is delicious and this particular car has cream leather and the cream leather it really does look classy though it's probably not family friendly I suspect sticky chocolate covered fingers aren't going to look really really good on this upholstery but everything you see in touch feels soft and quality. The infotainment system up the top responds fairly quickly to the touch. It's probably not quite as intuitive as some of it used and this particular car is not fitted with CarPlay though Mazda now has CarPlay as an option which means you can have it fitted with a module that they take this system apart and put the module in. It's about $500. I love the way the center console is laid out. It is simple and neat and concise. The screen, of course, is a touch screen and you can input directly into it or you can use the control module down between the two front seats. Also between the front seats is the electric parking brake, the auto hold, which holds you in traffic. Once you put your foot on the brake, you can take it off again and the drive mode control. The steering wheel buttons are typically Mazda and that's what you find in right across the Mazda range. It does have voice control but I've, like in most brands I've ever driven, really it's useless. If there's one thing that's worrying me, that never used to worry me in cars, but all of the piano black that you see on the dash and on the console is very shiny, it's highly polished and it reflects sun in the wrong light. So in some angles, the sun comes off and blinds you. Most of the surfaces on this six are low reflection, which is excellent. The cream leather looks absolutely sensational. And there's leather look fabric on the dash and doors as well. Probably isn't leather, but if you can't tell, what difference does it make? According to my thermometer, it's 39 degrees outside. Yep, it's 39 degrees outside. And inside, you know, it's 20 degrees cooler. We're not going across Wiseman's Ferry today to get to St Albans. We're going to take the side road, which is about 20 kilometers of dirt. It'll certainly sort the men out from the boys. We're now on the dirt section leading to St Albans. Believe it or not, the speed limit, according to that sign, which was rather faded, was 80. I'm not doing 80. I'm not going to do 80. It's not going to happen. The cabin's certainly noisier than it was on the bitumen, but it's still pretty quiet. The ride, though, is absolutely sensational. You probably can hear it on the recording but there's fine ruts in this gravel and you can feel it just through the suspension. It's, it's just incredible. As you can see the road surface is quite loose but this countryside is just absolutely sensational. There's plenty of room in the back. You can bring a couple of mates along. There's tons of room in the front. There's air conditioning, cup holders, USBs. 
why not get out and explore a bit of the countryside? Why not get out and do a trip like this? Get out of the city, get out of your lounge chair. Pack a picnic basket. Stop anywhere along here. Maybe not on a 40 degree day, that's probably taking things a little too far. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, St Albans. Of course, here in sleepy little St Albans, a car like this would probably stand out. Most of the cars here seem to be pretty old. And apart from the man sorting bottles over in the background there, it, this place is just amazingly quiet. That's what you can get away to in a car that's comfortable and quick and quiet and smooth. I rate Mazda 6 at 9 out of 10. And the reason it got that rating is because the ride on the gravel was just extraordinary. As always, don't forget to subscribe by hitting this little blue button.